Hi, I'm Michael Tanel with Touch Digital. And in this video, we're going to check out the interface switcher of Ubuntu Mate. If you've never heard of the interface switcher, it's a set of options that are available in the Mate Tweak Tool that allow you to change various aspects of your desktop interface. Whether you want to have a simple menu or an advanced menu, or you want to change a lot of things, like for example, make your, your interface resemble somewhat of a, par a paradigm for Windows or OS X or even Ubuntu Unity. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do in the interface switcher for the Mate Tweak Tool. It's pretty awesome. To get started, we'll need to launch the Mate Tweak Tool. You can do this by navigating through this main menu system depth, like this. Or you can do it through the control center, like this. And then next, we're going to click on the interface section of this sidebar. One of the best, if not the best, features of the interface switcher is the ability to change the panel layout. But we're going to save the best for last. So let's skip ahead to the most simple options, starting with the icon section. The icons on menus toggle is so when you, for all context menus uh, relates, uh, some of them have these icons next to them. But if you don't like those, you can go in here and just toggle them off. Show icons on button is also pretty simple. We're just going to go to preferences. And you can see these icons right here. We can just turn those off too. The context menu options is a little bit more complex, and for most people, it's not relevant. It's for people who need to change the input methods to like uh, different type of character styles and stuff like that. So if you have a a language that requires extra types of characters, you can use this these menus. Uh, and all this does is just allows someone who's not going to use them to turn them off. The toolbar style is uh, pretty simple. It's uh, you can choose between the below text. Um, just icons, just text, or like a hybrid actually. It says beside, but it's not, they don't all have it beside. It's more of a hybrid. Uh, I prefer this one actually. Uh, this one or the icons. The reason I like the icons is also because you can just hover over the button and it'll tell you what it does if you're not familiar with that particular icon. And obviously, you can change the size of the icons as well. Now to cover some more interesting features. Uh, enabling keyboard LEDs is a nice usability touch for those who don't have indicators directly on their keyboard. To let them know that they left a uh, caps lock on, for example. So if you enable keyboard LEDs, you'll see that this, uh, these icons show up in the system tray. Uh, the scroll lock, num lock, and caps lock icon. Uh, the, with the red indicating that it is active. This next feature is not quite obvious for what it does. Enabling indicators will appear to do nothing at first, but this is actually a fantastic feature because it enables support for Ubuntu's app indicators. And app indicators are the menus used on the top panel for Ubuntu's Unity desktop environment. So for a quick demo of what this does, let's check out the sound applet in the system tray. If you left click the sound applet, you get this uh, vertical volume slider and if you right click you get these menu options. With app indicators enabled you'll see, if you left click this applet you'll see the uh, menus and the slider have been combined into one menu and everything looks much nicer. The advanced menu option lets you turn the default main menu into a more full featured menu. So this is what the main menu looks like. And this is what the advanced menu looks like. I'd like to take a moment here and talk about the advanced menu. Uh, if you've ever used Linux Mint before, uh, the Mate edition specifically, you may recognize the menu. The advanced menu, aka the Mate menu, is a fork of Linux Mint's Mint menu. And in my opinion, 
is a much better version. The Mate menu has solved a lot of headaches that are still prevalent in the Mint menu. I'm just going to show you one example and then we'll move on. In the Mint menu, there is a usability flaw when launching applications. Searching for an application like Pluma, for example, you'll see it correctly finds the application and instinctively you probably click enter on your keyboard to launch it. Unfortunately, in Linux Mint, this just opens the search for files program. Instead, once the menu finds the application you want, you first need to press the down arrow on your keyboard and then press the enter key. This issue has been fixed in the Mate menu. So if you search for Pluma and press enter, it launches Pluma. There are a lot of other improvements in the Mate menu compared to the Mint menu, but I'll leave that for another video. Let's get back to the interface switcher. This next option is brand new with Ubuntu Mate 1604, and in my opinion, is a great idea to add a default option for a launcher utility. If you aren't aware of what a launcher is, there are applications that run transparently in the background until you activate them to complete a task. Synapse has been chosen as the default launcher for Ubuntu Mate 1604, and I think it is a great choice. Synapse comes with a lot of great features, but what sets it apart is that it is also lightweight when you compare it to other launchers like Kupfer and Gnomedo. My next video is going to be a closer look at Synapse and Ubuntu Mate 1604. So in this video, I'm just going to give you a few examples and a quick overview to demonstrate why I think it's a great addition. Once you enable the launcher and Mate tweak, you'll notice that there is a icon in the system tray. This is just to let you know that Synapse has been enabled but you can go in here and right click the icon and, ch and, turn and disable the icon from displaying in your system tray through the preferences. Launchers do what you'd expect, such as launching applications quickly. But they can also do a lot more. In order to open Synapse, all you need to do is click the icon in the system tray or use the keyboard shortcut, which is my preference, of control space. Here are a few examples of tasks that launchers can improve. First, finding and opening files to edit. I'm looking to edit a text file, so I'm going to type the name of the file, which is testdoc. So you can see it found the file that I want, and if I push enter, it opens it for me. Next, I need to do a quick calculation. I could open the calculator app, or I can just use Synapse. The final example I'll show you is invoking system actions. Let's say you want to shut down your computer. You could use the system tray button and then choose the option in the dialog here, or you could just use Synapse. You can also do all the other actions like suspend, log out, restart, and etc. There are a lot of other features Synapse offers, including a plugin system that allows you to add even more functionality. But I'll address those in the next video. We've now arrived to the moment you've all been waiting for. Except for those who aren't aware of what I'm talking about, or the people who just skipped everything else. So I guess the moment some of you have waited for. It's now time to demonstrate the awesome panel layouts feature. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this gives you the ability to change your entire desktop interface to resemble other systems like Windows or OS X. So first, let's demonstrate the Windows switch. If you select Redmond, which is referencing Redmond, Wisconsin, the location of the main campus for Microsoft, you'll see that everything has been turned to a bottom singular panel, and that you can just click this logo, the Ubuntu Mate logo, and you'll have a nice compact menu, uh, kind of reminiscent of the Windows 95, 98 era. You can also enable the advanced menu here and have a more modern style Windows paradigm. Next, let's check out the OS X version, which is labeled Cupertino, as in Cupertino, California, where the main campus of Apple is located. So once you click that, you'll see that it has uh, placed a main panel at the top and also a dock at the bottom. And now you can add more, uh, you can open more applications and save it 
to the dock by just right clicking and say keep in dock. The next layouts I'm going to show you are very similar. GNOME 2, Ubuntu Mate, and Fedora are all very similar to each other. So GNOME 2 is the default style from uh, the GNOME 2 era, which was uh, the predecessor to Mate. And if you switch back to Mate, you'll see that the only difference really is that this system button here and the trash icon are available on this particular layout, where they're not available on the GNOME 2 layout. And the other difference with Fedora is that they're both, Fedora's version and GNOME 2 are very similar as well, except the only difference is that Fedora has these quick launch icons as um, set by default. Next, let's take a look at the OpenSUSE style layout. Now, this is reminiscent of the OpenSUSE layout from the GNOME 2 era. It's not what OpenSUSE looks like right now. That's just to be clear about that. The only difference, really, between this one and the Redmond is that Redmond and this has a different menu, and Redmond doesn't have this workspace switcher. However, you could just add that applet to the Redmond panel layout, and you'd have the same thing. Um, the reason I wanted to show this is because this is the GNOME main menu uh, applet. And I think this is one of the worst applets on the GNOME 2 era style and inherently the, the Mate uh, applets. Because it looks really good. And functionally, it's useless. So for example, let's say you wanted to launch Pluma. Well, we just search for Pluma. Oh, wait, no. We have to search for Pluma again? Okay, I'll just click enter again. Uh, um, okay. What if I click this and hit enter? Oh, no, that doesn't work. What if I click, if I hit this and then I click find and then, okay. So that's useless. Now, let's say you wanted to open an application. You Okay, you can click more applications, which just opens a different thing, a whole different application, which, oh, I can search in here and that works. Okay, so essentially it's a shortcut to a better solution. What if you wanted to look at documents? Um, the same thing happens with the documents as far as like the search goes, but let's open the, um, okay, it just opens the documents folder. All right, but what about the places? It's, okay, it's just shortcuts for places and then opening. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, effectively, this menu is terrible. It was terrible then, it's terrible now. And uh, if I can make a request, I'd vote that this panel layout just be completely removed because bleh. The next layout is uh, called Netbook. And this is for people who are using a netbook, obviously, but also people who just want to save real screen real estate because it takes everything and moves it into one panel uh, at the top. Um, so you, know, you have a workspace switcher and you have all the applets and stuff and you have the menu. And uh, overall, it's a really nice solution for people who want to use as little space as possible. The next and final panel layout is being introduced in Ubuntu Mate 1604, and that's Mutiny. Mutiny is quite obviously set to resemble the Unity style of the Ubuntu mainline distro. And uh, you see this Ubuntu Mate logo menu, the top left, with this left side launcher, and the top panel with the system tray. Now if you have ind indicators enabled, uh, you have a very similar style uh, to Unity. Um, in fact, if you open up Kaha, you'll see that the global menu is also activated. So that's really cool in my opinion. Uh, this doesn't work for every application, but it does work for quite a few. And uh, you know there'll be more and more to have support later on. But I think this is really cool, and I really like this panel layout. So it's safe to say that the best part of the interface switcher is the panel layout switcher. But it gets better. You can actually create and save your own panel layout. So for example, let's say you want to go to Redmond. And let's say you don't like this menu right here. You want the more advanced menu. So you go in here and change it to advanced. And let's say that you um, 
don't like it on the bottom here, you want the panel to be on the top. Let's go ahead and change that. And let's say you don't um, you don't you don't like the fact that you can't see your workspace switcher, so we're going to add that. Got a workspace switcher now, and then I think we're done here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and save it, and it created it in the user share folder um, for called Michael Tweak dash Tweak really. Um, now let's go back to Ubuntu Mate, and um, we decide you want to go back to your custom one. We're just going to click custom, and there we go, right back to how we wanted it. You just click, see the icon, the menu is still there, the workspace is still there. Um, this is one of the reasons uh, the interface switcher is so awesome. So that's it for the Ubuntu Mate interface switcher and I think it's a really freaking awesome tool it gets better and better every single release uh, adding new layouts and you know it's it's awesome it's probably one of my favorite features of Ubuntu Mate um, but what do you think uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, have you used it are you is this something that makes you interested in trying Ubuntu Mate uh, please let me know I'd be really interested in hearing your comments or reading your comments considering I'd be reading them. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful please give it a like and um, if you're interested in getting more please subscribe to my channel. Uh, again thanks for watching I'm Michael Tunnell with Tux Digital and as always keep using, learning, and enjoying Linux.